But now let's head back to Wasiyan where Kaylee is doing some mushroom farming this morning. So what can you show us, Kaylee? I'm pretty sure you've come across some really cool looking mushrooms. Stephen, I really have. First off, didn't know there were so many different types of mushrooms and how the way that they're grown here, really cool at Kepler's Farms here in Wauseon. Join with me is Randy. Randy, we have so many different Hello. types of mushrooms. How do you guys start the process of growing these mushrooms? Oh, geez, that's quite the procedure. <laughs> I mean, first I start in the lab. Um, I actually do cultures. I do either tissue cultures or I do uh, spore cultures. And they go to straight to agar plates or liquid cultures. And then I end up taking the uh, cultures and putting them to spawn, which is a grain, and I sterilize that and it colonizes. And then once it colonizes, then it goes into a substrate, which gets sterilized, and it also gets uh, inoculated with the spawn, and then colonizes for approximately a week, uh, 10 days. Then from there, I'm going to go to the greenhouse. That is really cool. And there's so many different types of processes that we go through with growing mushrooms, Randy. Yes. And Stephen mentioned just a moment ago that there's so many different types of mushrooms. <laughs> what are we looking at here? I mean, there's different types oh, of mushrooms. You have oils and all sorts of things. So kind of walk me through what we're looking oh, at. Yeah, on the right side here, uh, this is a reishi mushroom. It's purely medicinal. Uh, you can use it in tinctures and teas and coffees. Uh, we have our pink oyster mushroom, which we fry it up crispy enough. It's my wife's favorite. It tastes like bacon. Ooh. Everybody loves that one. That one sells pretty good at the market. Steven Jackson, uh, did you hear that? That's <laughs> fake bacon for you. It's yep. vegan. Black Bro King mushrooms, which are great deep fried or broiled like a steak. Uh, they're, they hold their texture really nicely. Uh, then we got lion's mane, our, everyone's favorite. <laughs> it, you can't keep it on the shelf. Everyone wants it because it tastes like uh, crab meat, lobster, uh, saute with onions and butter and some on, uh, garlic. Very cool. Then you got your golden oyster. They taste great uh, sauteed with nutty flavor or uh, they taste like cucumbers raw. Ooh, really and not only do you have just the mushrooms in general, you also, after you sell them at the farmer's market, which we'll talk about in a moment, what, am I, what we're looking at, there's different types of spices and oils as well? Yes, well, we come home with whatever we have left over, or as I grow it, I dehydrate uh, whatever's uh, available, and we put them into spices, or we do a super blend, which is like five different oyster mushrooms all ground up together, and I also make tinctures, uh, medicinal tinctures as well. So we're also looking at not only the oils, but also the spices but these different bags of mushrooms as well. You sell these at the Toledo's Farmer's Market every week. Yes, we week. do, every Saturday morning. And one thing I didn't know, and you guys might not know this at home, is the Toledo's Farmer Market goes all year round. Yes, all year round. Uh, during the summer, it's eight to two, and then during the winter, it's nine to one. Very cool. So. Now, one other thing that you showed me a little bit ago, let's go outside, Kenny. Yes. We're gonna go for a little walk at the greenhouse. Yeah. It's not green. It doesn't <laughs> show a lot of light, but there are some light fixtures in there. Kenny, if you yes. wanna follow Randy yes. into the greenhouse. Yes. Randy, kind of walk us through what we're looking at once we get inside there. Okay. Well, this is all humidity controlled, light controlled, uh, temperature controlled. And uh, what we do is we bring it in here and probably a week after the colonized substrate is in here, it uh, actually starts fruiting. And as you can see, the lion's mane, we've got blue oysters. Shelves are pretty full. Uh, <laughs> this will all get picked tonight or tomorrow night, uh, getting ready for the market. Oh, wow. Now, something that I asked you earlier, how long does it take from them from going to cultures to being in the bag? We're looking at approximately one month total time. Oh, wow. For the cultures to grow out, the spawn to grow out, and the uh, substrate to colonize. Now, this is a very unique job slash hobby that you have. How did you get into this? Oh, years ago I've been foraging for a long time. Uh, parents took me out. My brother-in-law was a big influence on me. Uh, he took me out uh, morel hunting and uh, just to go out chanterelle hunting. It was a good time. Uh, and then I started uh, liking mushrooms because as a kid I always took them off my pizza or out of my spaghetti sauce yeah, but now I yeah. just love mushrooms. We cook them <laughs> many different ways now. And how can people find your mushrooms? Uh, we, we can call. Uh, it's uh, kepfirstmushroomfarm.com and uh, we have a whole website. I'm working on the uh, commerce part of it right now so you can actually buy some from off online. Nice. Um, or we have a uh, our Facebook, which is Kepfer's Mushroom mm -hmm. Farm. Uh, we also have our phone number, 
uh, in our you can text call that's what we always tell people perfect so. <laughs> so there's so many different ways to reach out uh, definitely so many different things I did not know about mushrooms from tasting like bacon to use like even cucumbers yes. and so many different unique types of flavors so definitely come check them out again they're here in Wauseon in Fulton County and like you guys said earlier it is National Mushroom Month so what a better way to celebrate right Absolutely, really cool. I love lion's mane mushroom. Like he said, it's hard to keep that on the shelves. You can make it taste like just about anything. Yeah, you should try it. <laughs> Bring us some back, Kaylee, maybe. <laughs> we'll be back with more Good Day. Stay with us.